Oh, here we are. Today I'm in the classroom to explain storm hydrographs. So, we've been from the upper course of the River Severn in the Plymouth Hills in Wales. We've gone through Welshpool, we've gone through Shrewsbury, and we're starting to make our way through the middle course of the River Severn towards Tewkesbury. I wanted to talk about today the impacts of flooding. So, before we do that, I wanted to go through Bradshaw's model and actually have it visually on the screen for you. I've talked about Bradshaw's model in my earlier videos and I wanted to show what it looks like. When you're in the upper course of the river, we can see the changes in different parts of the river. So the discharge, the amount of water flowing through a river, there isn't that much in the start of the river. And as you make your way through the middle and lower course, the discharge increases. This is because you've got tributaries joining up other rivers, like the Avon that we saw, we will see joining up in Tewkesbury. Um, all these rivers join up so there's more water flowing through the river at a certain point. We can see here the channel depth starts to increase gradually as we make our way towards the river mouth. The velocity, interestingly, like we think that the velocity in the upper course of the river will be steep, uh, sorry, will be, will be high. That is not the case, even though there is, um, there's a high relief. There is a lot of friction in play. The water slows down as there's lots of rocks. There isn't that much water. The discharge is lower. So the velocity increases as we make our way towards the river mouth. The load, the load, the amount of sediment material transported by the river naturally increases as we make our way down. On the other hand, we've got some different factors. Load particle size, the, the materials, the rocks, are very jagged, a lot bigger, like I've seen in previous videos, in the upper course of the river, as proso erosion, abrasion, hydraulic action won't have impacted and eroded these materials, keeping them larger and more jagged. And we can see the channel bed roughness, similarly with particle size, is, uh, is very rough in the upper course, and it's very steep at the start of a river. This is a very important concept, Bradshaw's model, and helps us understand how rivers change from the upstream to the downstream of a river like the River Severn. So, a storm hydrograph. This records a river's discharge over a period of time. A river discharge, cross-sectional area, times uh, the river's mean average velocity, that's the speed of the river. And we're going to show how a flood, or how high amounts of rainfall, could lead to increased flood risk for certain areas such as Tewkesbury. Here we have uh, the Tewkesbury flood from 2007, like I'll discuss in one, of my, in one of my future videos, and we're going to now look and understand how one of these storm hydrographs is put together. Right, what you'll see here, on this axis we've got our discharge. On this axis we've got the hours from the start of the rainstorm, so going 0, 12, uh, 24, that's meant to be, that's the wrong way, uh, that's wrong map. Anyway, that's going to be 60. What we'll notice, we've got this bar chart, okay? We've got this bar chart, and this shows our amount of rainfall that's happening, okay? So we can see here the discharge, the amount of rainfall that has happened in one go. We then have our discharge shown as a line graph, the amount of water flowing through a river. This is shown in the screen as a line graph. As we then start to move along, the, the time or the, the, the time that the water starts to go into the river and the discharge gets higher, this hit part of this line graph is known as the rising limb. When we're at the top and the peak of our, of our rising limb, we find our peak flow. That is the maximum discharge, the, amount of the maximum amount of water flowing in a river. Once we go beyond that, we have our recession limb. The water starting to go away now, the falling water in our river. So, we've got something called the basin lag time. Now, the basin lag time is the difference between the peak of our rainstorm, which is shown in our bar chart, and the peak flow of the river. This is a really important point, as this is usually our base flow, the amount of water that would normally be flowing through a river. But obviously, once we have increased rainfall, that will lead to increased water in a river, increased discharge, and that will lead to the increased chance of a flood. 
So, we'll go back to that one now. A lag time is a really important concept. The shorter the lag time, the sooner it is that water will flow into an area and cause major flooding. So there are factors that could influence the lag time. Saturated ground, high amounts of rainfall, the ground being saturated, clogged up with water, water cannot flow away, means that water will flow into a river faster and cause flooding. Chopping down trees, deforestation, trees intercept water. If you have less trees alongside a river, there will be a higher chance of the lag time being shorter. Trees not absorbing the water and not intercepting more water in the river, higher chance of a flood from occurring. You can also have antecedent conditions. If you might have had dry conditions in the past or heavy rain in the past means in the future, if you have a high chance of a flood or high rainfall, the ground is, is either really hard, water will flow over it fast, or the ground is really soft and saturated, water will once again flow into the river faster. And one of the most important factors that causes a shorter lag time, and that is urbanisation, the building of an urban area. We're seeing today in places like the UK that we are starting to build more and more on floodplains. This is because we're running out of space to build homes and we're building on floodplains. The problem with building on floodplains is they're there to be flooded. And if we're building concrete, houses, what have you, the water cannot flow into the ground. It will flow and drain into drains much, much faster that will then flow inevitably into rivers such as the River Severn quicker. So the time between our peak rainfall and our peak uh, flow is incredibly important. If that is really short, that means the river will flood much, much faster and cause problems to places like Tewkesbury. So, a graph such as this is incredibly important to understand flood risk for certain areas. And Tewkesbury, like we'll see in uh, my future videos, has an incredibly high chance of flooding again in the future. With issues of climate change, um, with increased urbanisation, deforestation, there will be increased flood risk and an effect on the lag time to places like Tewkesbury. Once again, this is some great geography in action.